In case we just heard a big thud. <laughs> so we're gonna go hunt for this fallen durian. It's gone, it's there. Oh my god. I want to go eight or nine kilos. Yes, this is it. Our first Bangkok durian. I'm so glad you heard it. Hi everyone and welcome to another update here at the Friggy Farm. We've been up to a lot as usual, so let's jump straight in and we'll show you what we've been up to. So welcome to our half-finished shed area. Um, it's like a multi-use space. We've pretty much designed it from the existing structure and then we sort of looked at what we needed as requirements what we thought we might need in a year's time. And so we started designing. We made a lot of changes along the way. We thought we were gonna use normal square columns because that's the traditional way of doing it here. But then we ended up using 160 diameter pipes. We've got three areas under cover. We'll most probably have our compost. We'll be building up a big concrete um, boxed area here for all our um, worm farming. And uh, the roof, guys. These the artisans here are something else. When we ordered the wood, I really thought they were just gonna nail it together. But no, they took the time to carve and groove every little element that forms part of the structure. So it's pretty much like a puzzle. So afterwards, you can just take out one or two nails and the whole thing will come off. It's, the workmanship is absolutely incredible, so you're really happy with that. And then small things like, they could have just put a little piece of square wood here, but they add this carving in, which they do with an ax. Like, it's absolutely awesome to see, and uh, yeah, we'll show you how it turns out. Our biggest durian tree with the most durians growing on it has turned out to be quite a disappointment, and that's because the, the durians don't seem to have ripened well. Putting it down to the unexpected rain during the flowering season, which is very unusual for that time of year in Bali. So although we're getting between two and six durians falling every night, they seem to be hitting the ground, um, cracking a day or two later. When it hit the ground, that notifies the durian that it's ready to ripen, and then it cracks open on its own when it's, when it's ready to eat. So if it was truly ripe, it should pop open quite easily, but it's not opening so easily, which is not a good sign. No, a little bit of a push, but not ripe. Sadly, another one to the compost pit. Which has been such a disappointment. We've probably had about 30 durians fall and we've maybe managed to eat maybe two. The rest have gone into our compost pit. So we're so glad that we didn't end up getting someone in to tie all the durians. It would have been quite a waste. So instead, we just had a few bags of extra. I think there's something in there. <laughs> it's just a Larry. Okay, it was just a lizard, a little Larry lizard, but we are in the jungle, so you've got to be careful where you sit and where you put your feet. So as I was saying, we just put a couple of these hay bags here just to try and catch a few that seem to be breaking when they hit the ground, because we thought that was initially the problem. But despite doing that, they still don't seem to be ripening well. So I think we're learning that every season is going to be different. With nature, nothing's guaranteed. Um, we can't have control over it, so we're hoping that next season will be better. That either that we won't get rain during the flowering season or that the trees start to adjust to the new weather patterns. But either way, we've got some Bangkok durians on the way and fortunate to be in an area where there's abundant durians so we can get it at really good prices and stock up for the off-season. Luckily, I made 11 dentists <laughs> I heard a crash boom bang. Some locals, massive locals. And we got some potted soil for our seedlings so I can get started because our soil has very, got a very high clay content in it so we needed to get some potted soil to mix. So I'm going to get some planting on some tomatoes, seedlings, some lettuce seedlings and a couple of other um, herbs and flowers for the garden. What's happening here? Tell us the plan. Just doing some ground clearance for our new plantable area. We're just clearing this area because it's currently unusable um, and we need to get it productive. Phew, that was quick. I'm sure someone knows what they're doing, but it's not me. <laughs> So 
So we took quite a while to decide where we're going to put our planter beds for our, our tomatoes, our leaves, our cucumbers. There's so many things to factor in from the slope of the land to the sunlight to the rain to cows and chickens. All factors considered, we decided to put our planter beds on this side of the land. So after realizing how many different uses there were for the byproducts from the teak trees that we cut, it gave us the idea to reach out to the locals to see if we could get some more off-cuts from other trees that had been cut down. I guess the other reason that gave us this idea was because after preparing the breads and putting down the hay, the chickens thought it was their playground and made an absolute mess of the straw, so we realised we do need to not only contain that, but also contain the soil, especially when heavy rains come through. So Chris and I help on the land got to work preparing these planter borders for our planter beds, and it came out better than we even imagined. It's really looking good and going to work well. When I was talking to our help on the land, pointed out this tree and we were quite concerned about it. All the leaves were dead, the um, twigs even started falling down. It was completely enroached with uh, a creeper. There was some evidence of the bark not doing too well, but our helper wasn't too knowledgeable, so we got someone on board. And what he said was, it was actually the creeper that was killing it, sort of from the top down. And the only way that they know really how to stop it is to take all the uh, creeper off. And at such a height, most probably 25 meters, um, it's quite a dangerous thing to do, so we ended up opting for him just to cut the branches off, which we believe will grow back in the future, we hope, so it doesn't keep looking like a skeleton. But uh, either way, it's still alive and it's still growing, so we have him. Making sides for dragon fruit plants, just to designate them so that we don't have to worry too much about weeds and fading it. It's a nice, secure area and looks neat. and. Uh, using our old, old off-cuts. Yeah. Ah. Hi-ho, hi-ho. It's off to work we go. Sure. Up and down, up and down. 20 times today. Minimum. So welcome to the far, far, far right corner of our property. All the twists and turns is most probably 200 meters walk. Um, we've got this like owl kink right in the corner and that's why I've decided to do a little dragon fruit plantation over here. We're not very big into the mono cropping, but because it's such a far distance from the house and it's an area that we won't really frequent a lot, we thought it's a perfect spot. It's got wonderful sunlight and we're needing bulk. So it's not the prettiest type of plantation or or plant we do have already maybe 30 of these posts well not these posts wooden posts along in the land but because we eat so much fruit we're needing to maximize and ideally eat all our um, dragon fruit off the land so that's why I've planted another 15 posts here before I actually continue explaining our little um, plantation area here literally the day before we started planting these posts a massive tree this tree came down and it would have taken out at least six of our posts with all its um, foliage. But luckily it was the day before and it actually looks amazing now. We're not sure what happens here. Does the owner come out and cut it up? But what I do know is that the wood that falls down does not belong to us. It does still belong to the owner, except for this one little piece that we've borrowed to support our arch. So let's see if he ever does come out. If he doesn't, I'm extremely happy. It's a wonderful little feature for us. But if he does, he does. Side point, our sugar cane is pumping. pumping. So how we decided to plant this, uh, we did a little bit of research and we realized we need to be planting it between 2.2 to 3 meters in distance apart. To maximize the amount of space that we had here and the width, we placed it out in this configuration. So we're hoping that's got enough space because once this goes out and we put our post over here, the dragon fruit will come around and drop about here, I would say. So it gives us a little bit of space in between just to make, make our rounds. And so far, um, we've just planted one on each side. Amy's busy uh, rooting them at the moment. I did some research and found out that you can cut them up um, into smaller lengths to create multiple dragon fruit plants, so that's what we did. We've just been drying them out so that they tell us again before we try to replant them. We're just doing different methods. So before we just put it straight into the ground and it took quite a while to take. So now we're doing it in smaller pots and also testing with water and heating pads and all these different types of things. So once that they start rooting, then we'll be planting them around. So we'll have four on each post and hopefully we'll start uh, producing an amazing yield for us. Look what I spotted, flying in our stream. Our first 
mangosteen fruit has fallen from this tree over here which means there must be more ah there i can even see another ripe mangosteen oh my goodness chris just climbed to pick this one and friends how does it feel so heavy Perfect push, perfect color, not too rich. Our first mangosteen fruit fresh from and the tree. Another one. Now it's like a steak. Yes. Yeah. One, two. I normally use a knife for this, but this, oh my Chin. gosh, it's just breaking. Oh, so fresh. Oh my gosh. This is absolutely incredible. Fresh from the tree, harvested right now. Mm. The queen of fruit. <laughs> Delicious. We've spotted some more that we need to pick. This is just looking for a stick. This is what they use for offerings. What have you got there? Oh, perfect. <laughs> a fruit picker. Voila. <laughs> Amazing. Yesterday, a help on the land made, made us this very nifty tool to use to help us to pick the mangosteen that are hard to reach. Although it is quite fun climbing the trees, hey Chris? Uh, you have to alternate. <laughs> you can see three mangosteens that are ready to be picked. It's amazing how the eye just automatically notices the right fruit on the tree. Can you get it, Brooke? Coming back from our fruit haul, from walk around the land. Chris got some climbing in. Big climbing daily in exercise. <laughs> so incredible to be seeing all these beautiful fruits that have come from our land. And these. Yeah. So this is all harvested from the trees on our land. Yep. It's about, I think about five or six kilos. We normally pay around two dollars or thirty rand a kilo for mangosteens. To know that this is all free from our land just makes it taste even better. And the fact that it's so fresh, these have literally been picked today. It's just like, what more could we ask for? What you doing? Making a little temporary quick uh, fireplace so we can uh, have some calibre card. Coconut. Like a bird on Fire a tree. coconut or burnt coconut. I'm just sitting here. I got time. It's clear to see. Got the caliper. Got his fire going. From in. up here. <laughs> the world seems small. This is the freaky version of a, a barbecue. <laughs> Sunday barbecue. <laughs> and it's Sunday. So we're just having a little foot spa. Ticklish as anything. 